Good morning, church family. Last Sunday, I had the honor and privilege of preaching the charge to the minister to Rebecca Froome at her ordination service in Boston. Our congregation co-ordained her with the Arlington, Arlington Street Church of Boston. Uh, Rebecca grew up here, is a very fine new minister in our movement, and Rudy Sprinkle uh, was the leader from our congregation who gave the words of ordination. Did an excellent job. So I think it's a great. It was a great day for our church and our Unitarian Universalist faith movement, uh, shared between Boston and Philly. I wish last night's. Um, I wish the Sixers had played some of these wins before I got to preach. They were down when I got in the pulpit. We are a caring congregation. We do ministry together, and I want to lift up June Krebs, whose uh, daughter-in-law died uh, in her 50s, uh, a very sad death, and our, our heart is with June uh, in the grieving process. We're surrounding you with our love, June. Social justice is our spiritual theme of the month, and I have been reading a book that touches on many important spiritual and social justice issues that I believe are under uh, identified in our church life these days. I highly recommend this book for anyone. It's called Going Solo, The Extraordinary Rise and Surprising Appeal of Living Alone by New York University sociologist Eric Kleinenberg. Our reading today comes from that book. When talking about folks who live alone, he writes that many of them believe that they are treated unfairly in their personal and public lives. And a growing number have decided that they'd be better off coming together as a group. There are a number of groups, including one called Quirky Alone, which seeks acceptance, legitimacy, and community. But other groups want more. Better access to health care, housing, and social security. More fairness in the tax code. Less workplace discrimination, greater representation in politics, a stronger public voice. Kim Calvert is an activist in Southern California and she converted several rooms near the entryway of her house into an office space. For the small staff she recru recruited to launch Singular Communications which published Singular Magazine until 2009, now produces a website and social networking services called SingularCity.com. There's a focus on Los Angeles for that group, but it touches on many national issues. Uh, Kim it was a journalist and a dot-com veteran. She's in her late 40s. She counts herself among the ranks of people who live alone but are resolutely opposed to identifying themselves as single. It's a word that just has horrible associations for me, she says. It makes me think of desperate, unhappy people who can't get a date and that's never been who I am. Calvert believes that there are millions of men and women who are better off going solo. There's a mission to this, she explains. We want to liberate single people from the bondage of old ideas that are blocking their ability to have a great life today. And that means fighting against the huge industry out there that makes money by making single people feel bad about who they are. Think about those TV shows that do makeovers so people can finally be desirable, finally get married, finally be happy. They program us to think that it's awful to be single and tell us that we need to be fixed. We have to overcome that. Calvert, uh, in her editor's letter for the premier issue of Singular Magazine, wrote the following. I like being single. I like my life. I have great friends. I'm active involved in my community, and have the career of my dreams. I love my time alone to read, write, meditate, and be with me without compromise. 
I don't need another half to be whole. I am complete. And yes, I love men, I love romance, I love intimacy, but it's so much better now that I've banished the marriage agenda. So you, if you can identify with me, if you're comfortable being single, if you enjoy an active social lifestyle, Singular Magazine is for you.